Hey Bulls fans, Adam Harry here, back again with a, another unboxing and review. Today I have the Relic Knight starter box, uh, faction starter for the No Empire, uh, their the battle box. Uh, so as you can see here, it still has the uh, plastic wrap on it. So I'm going to rip open the plastic wrap. This is what you get inside. Uh, a couple of big guys, and I'm going to go over their names in a second. You get one uh, uh, questing knight and their... Uh, their Esper guy generator, uh, the sprite, sorry, and then um, Zanetta, the sprite model, uh, render model, and two berserker models. So that's basically the starter box. And then of course you need everything you need to play except for a tape measure is included in this and a buddy. Your, your friend can't fit in the box, I'm sorry. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, bust this open and uh, yeah, we'll take a look at the contents. So I've got the, uh, the plastic wrap off, let me go ahead and First time opening it, so here we go. What's inside? So, as I'm pulling out the contents here, I want to mention something. I really like the No Faction. Uh, these are the giant mega Oni Demon looking berserker guys. Uh, you know, like Japanese folklore, big red demon guys. I think they're super cool. Um, and I'm going to go over all the contents here in a second. And so. This is everything in the starters. You saw me pull it out. So first off, uh, all your cards that you need, uh, representing all the stuff that comes in the box. So there's your Berserker cards. There you get two of those guys. And I'll go over the stats in a second. Uh, your Render, uh, one of the, those guys. And uh, he's a big Oni Demon, as you can see. And then with a big gun. And then his uh, ability card. Uh, the back of the cards are actually just uh, their faction color there. Uh, spite and that card. This is a cipher. I was looking for that word earlier. Cipher are the little uh, helpers that go with the questing, uh, questing knights or relic knights, and uh, give them abilities. So, <laughs> or give them give them uh, uh, esper and stuff like that. But and then uh, this is the high priestess card. This one goes in your active pile or whatever. And then this is the stat cards on her. And so. There's her abilities and hit points and everything, and this is the uh, spells. And she also has a couple other spells. She's actually uh, a corruption master and an entropy master, which those are also those decks are also those cards are also in this battle box deck. So, um, but that's the cards, um, miniature wise. Jump into that stuff because I know that's what everybody's looking for. Get the plastic off in here. And dump some of this stuff out. This looks like the same. Uh, PVC stuff that uh, Privateer Press uses as well. Um, it's got the pretty good detail on it. Uh, maybe not as crisp as some of uh, the resin stuff, but it's definitely stronger than, say, plastic. Um, bending on it there, it's pretty solid. Uh, I do. It just still has a fair, fair amount of detail. I mean, it's not. Um, it's it's good. <laughs> it's not bad. I'm trying to say, uh, it's good stuff. Those look like the berserkers there. So those are those big Oni guys. There's a little bit of flash cleaning on the model, a little bit of mold line, but Hey, what comes without mold lines these days besides super resin stuff. So even that sometimes you got to clean up. So anyway, I'm saying not bad. Uh, and let's see here. There's a boss. Rip her open. The relic knight, the questing knight here. The, the uh, reason I'm saying Questing Knight, not Relic Knight, is Relic Knights are the ones that have found their relics, and the Questing Knights are still looking for theirs. So uh, there is a difference, and I'll get into that in a second. Um, that's the Gun Toten Render model there. Pretty cool. Um, I'm going to hate sort through all this later to sort through everything. But there's actually the the, the, relic, the Questing Knight there. Uh, Zanetta. So, not bad. I like the detail on that. Uh... Got a little flash. I'll clean all that stuff off. But yeah, as you can see, um, it's got the bases, uh, everything you need. This is actually your play area that you need as far as the uh, layouts for your cards. So this is your active card slot, and this is the ready slots, and then your your idle pile, um, Esper deck, discard deck, dead pile, and then uh, tokens, which. You actually get a full set of starter tokens in the pack. Um, that's why this, I think that this, these boxes, these starter boxes are such a great value is because you get literally everything you need. Tokens, you've got different tokens for um, different effects you can buy, <clears throat> as well as token markers for other things. And then these big tokens are actually your objective tokens in there as well. So there's two. Um, 
you know what? Let me just rip this open too. Show you guys what I'm talking about at home. Spillage, awesome. So here's what I was wanting to show off. Pick all this stuff up in a second. <laughs> so these two are secondary objective markers and this is a primary objective marker. You can see the difference in the icons. This is not filled in and these are kind of solid trapezoid looking things. So, um, polygons, whatever. And the point is, <laughs> it's everything you need. You get a bunch of these tokens, which I just spilled everywhere. Um, but those are for different things that, that you can use in the game. Um, all right, so that's pretty much, oh, I forgot one of the most important things. I wasn't joking when I said everything you need to play is in this box. You also get a mini rule book. Um, it's got some color in there. Um, I will. I don't want to say it's. I guess it's full color technically because like it's the same. Like there are colored pages throughout, but whatever. <laughs> it's a mini rule book. It's pretty high quality as far as, as printing and stuff goes. Um, it, it's kind of like an old school video game instruction manual to be perfectly honest. Um, they don't really make those anymore, but uh, it's everything you need to play. It's run down the rules, uh, all the abilities and stuff like that, all the keywords that you need to know about are actually in this rule book. Different traits, order of operations, reference section. Super, super nice, really short, concise. Doesn't have any of the backstory really, but I mean, you don't need that to start playing if you just want to dive in. So um, that's pretty much it for the starter, but uh, let me pause real quick and clean some of the stuff up. I want to show you guys a couple of bonus things. All right, Bulls fans. So this is a couple things I wanted to show off, uh, and then I'll get to the bonus stuff real fast. This is the Esper deck. Everybody should have the exact same number of cards in their Esper deck. Um, it's three of each card, and that's how you know if somebody's cheating. You just count their cards, and then make sure that uh, all the colors are, are there in equal amounts. So there you go, because um, there's no dice in this game. So these are the extra cards I was talking about. Um, these are different scenario cards. Again, all included. Uh, you. Scenario generations covered in the rule book. I'm not going to go over that here, but this is what I was talking about on her card, on the Questing Knights card here. She is a Corruption Master and an Entropy Master. So what that means is she actually has a couple of extra cards, and they're on the back of these cards. So Corruption Actions and Entropy Actions. So in addition to all of these abilities listed on her card, she also has down to master action or through the master action so she's got all of these as well so pretty cool stuff there um, I also real quick if you're not familiar with the game at all I want to go over the stack cards if you guys don't mind so how the stack card works and I've done this in some other stuff but again just want to reillustrate here uh, stack cards this is her movement speed it's her first move is the first number uh, the second move is the second number so you can move six inches for a first move do an action and then six more inches for a follow-up move uh, this fist is melee attack, so she's got two points of melee attack and two points of melee defense. Uh, three here is range. She's got one point of ranged uh, damage and three points against ranged defense. So anybody hitting her with melee attack, she's going to draw two cards. Anybody shooting at her, she's going to draw three cards. And this last one here is psychic, or this attack. So that's four on attack and four on defense. So when she attacks, when she successfully casts a spell to attack, so I mean, what should I'm talking about here? So these cards have different things here. She's got one melee attack and looks like two psychic things and a redirect. I'm not going to go over redirects in this review, but so psychic attack, what happens here? She's got to pay for the attack first. So she's got to pay two red and one purple to get off Calamity's Curse. Um, and then she can draw an additional four cards. Boom, right there. And then she can use all of her cards that she has left to try to boost the attack. She can pay for all of these. So... Um, she can pay for all of them, or none of them, or in, in any order. So it's not this, this, this. It's it's literally, she can pay three red and three yellow, or just three purple, or whatever, that she has extra, and she wants to do those extra boost attacks. So again, quick run down there. The last stat on the card is her defense. Um, so that was psychic defense. Um, her armor, sorry, not defense. So any attacks to her are going to do full damage. She has no armor. Um, so if this attack, for instance, was hitting her for three damage, she would just take three damage because she has no armor. If she has two armor, zero, you know, one damage, one armor, two points, you get it. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. If, if somebody was shooting at her with a psychic ability, though, she would draw four cards for the defense, and then that's when this redirect comes in, um, which you can make the attack go somewhere else. Or some of them have guard abilities and stuff like that, but I'm not going to go over all that. That was just a quick rundown of what the entropy deck is. Now, for the bonus stuff.
this is what I was excited about. This stuff I picked up at Gen Con. Um, just wanted to show off. This is Corsaro Toe, and uh, he is the actual No Empire Relic Knight, full-blown knight. You may have seen that miniature before. It's the big dude on the, uh, the mechanical lion dragon thing with his little buddy there, and he's like standing up there like a rock star pointing at the Chaos Gods there. <laughs> and then uh, Mamaro Toe, who's in, uh, an Empire Unique. And uh, that's what his model looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and bust this one open real fast. And again, everything for this model comes in. Just drop the card, pick it up, boom. It's Mamaro Toe, Mamaro, Warlord Mamaro Toe. That's all his abilities there, as you can see. And this is his card that goes in the, the uh, activations deck. So that's his stats there. Um, he is a unique, so he has a bigger Esper pool and way more hit points. Um, and these guys are fairly tough. Well, some of them are tough, some of them are kind of squishy, and they actually have a really cool play style of, of uh, doing a lot of tricksy stuff you wouldn't expect from big bulky models. So, But that's what comes in there, and again, let me rip this open. Haha, no spillage this time. So, again, it's the same polyvinyl chloride PVC stuff that uh, Privateer Press uses. Uh, holds the detail somewhat well on these models. It, it's pretty good overall. I mean, I, I like it. Um, I know a couple of people that uh, are in the industry that were really bemoaning this stuff, but I mean, I don't know. I can work with this stuff and it's pretty cool for me. I don't know. Whatever. I'm not that choosy. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff though. Um, this is a really cool model. Look at this bit. That's one bit. That's the back it looks like. Crazy club thing. I'm gonna have to clean the stuff up before I uh, assemble it and paint it, but you get the point. It's it's good stuff. If you play War Machine at all, I mean, it's the same stuff. Um, and then this one, big base, big, big base, as you can see there. I think that's the 80 millimeter base. Um, actually, that's another cool thing about the cards. It actually tells you the model size and on the card, it'll actually tell you the base size, which is 80, and the model size, this is a size 5 model, which applies to his volume, so, and the point value there, so that's what that number is, 19. So, anyway, um, yeah, I'm excited to put all this stuff together, hopefully I have some shots at the end of this video, if not, um, I'll have some showcase stuff for you later. So, anyway, that's Adam here from Bulls, that was the No Empire Battle Box, and a whole bunch of bonus stuff. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you like what you're seeing, give us a uh, like, subscribe down at the bottom. Uh, yell at us in the comments, whatever you need to do down there. <laughs> uh, if you haven't played Relic Knights yet, go check it out. It's a good game. Uh, I'm hoping to get some more games in and uh, trying to figure out a way to do battle reports because the activation's kind of wonky. It's similar to X-Wing in some regards, but, but anyway. Um, that's Adam Mayer for Bowls signing off. Have a good one.